Good morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to talk to you about migraines, headaches, um, my a little brief history um, of my own experience with them and tell you everything that I've tried and then tell you what my coping mechanisms are in the hope that something I say may help you um, because I know how horrific they are and I have different types of headaches so I may well have experienced what you experience. So my experience is that I've had headaches for 13 years. I started getting headaches at 33 years old, I'm now 46. So I had not had a single headache up until I was 33. I had heard people saying I have a headache and I had literally never experienced a headache. I had had a lot of neck pain in my life to the point where I remember um, spending money from, I had a Saturday job in a chemist and I used to work there in the summer, you know, I'd, I'd do a week, and I'd, uh, a week in the chemist and I'd get a lot of money and I'd spent money to go and see a chiropractor because my neck was very sore. So I did have neck problems, but I didn't ever have a headache. Um, so I was 33 and I started getting these headaches and they happened at two o'clock every single day. And it's been pretty much the same for the 13 years. It's always been afternoons, mostly afternoons. Um, I have two different types of headaches though. I get cervicogenic headaches, which are the ones where the neck pain causes me to get a headache. And I also have migraines. Um, the migraines don't come on in the afternoon. They have sometimes come on in the morning. I can wake up feeling a bit unusual and have a kind of aura. It's not the aura that most people get where they see things. I just feel a bit odd or I can wake up at three o'clock in the morning with them. Again, everything's time specific with me and the migraines that have been the worst, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning in absolute agony. And then they last probably two to three days, those really awful migraines. Those migraines, I cannot stand noise. I cannot stand like even somebody talking, Kev has to whisper, the kettle going on, a door closing, nothing. <laughs> um, I can't stand any light, um, I feel very sick. You know, it's that kind of migraine. With the cervicogenic headaches, they are, they make me feel dizzy. They make me feel foggy headed, like I can't concentrate, I can't look at anything. I also get noise intolerance with them, but not to the same level as with the migraine. Um, I don't tend to get light intolerance with them, thankfully, but I do, tend to just want to sleep through them um, because there's not really much else I can do. My headaches have unfortunately been worse for the last three years, I'm not sure why, um, but pretty much every afternoon I am sleeping and struggling with this kind of foggy brain and it's the, the actual pain of the headache is varying levels. Sometimes it's a blinding headache, sometimes it's a low level headache. Um, thankfully, I don't get the migraines very often. Um, so that's my history. I've listed the things that I've tried because I've tried that many things, I had to sit down and write them all down. So I have tried acupuncture, Alexander technique, chiropractic, osteopathy, massage. Massage did help, but temporarily. Um, I had tests that found I was anemic and I got iron and that helped, seemed to help for a little while, but I don't know whether that was coincidental. Um, I've had all my hormones checked and you know, I, I was stopped, um, when I was diagnosed with migraines, they stopped the contraceptive pill. I was no longer allowed to take that, so I no longer have estrogen. Um, I have had my blood pressure now, it's now controlled and has been for the last three years, so it's not that. That was something else that could have contributed. Um, I don't have constipation, that's something else that's worth looking at for you guys. Um, and I've tried triptans, so I tried to do my triptan, which is a migraine tablet, it didn't work for me, it made me feel actually very, very weird, I didn't like the feeling at all. Um, I tried KT taping, that's something that I do actually use. I do have KT taping on at the minute, it's physio tape basically. Um, but it, it doesn't do that much for me. I'm trying it again this week, just in different ways to see if it could help. Um, Rebound. I was thinking, what on earth is rebound? Rebound headaches. I've tried not taking um, paracetamol for three weeks and I've tried not taking codeine for three weeks. I'll tell you what drugs I'm on. Um, but I've tried that just in case it was a medication headache because that can happen. Um, I've had the dentist check if it is teeth grinding and it's not teeth grinding. I've tried to pyramate and I'm currently trying that for a second time. To pyramate is a specific um, drug for migraines. 
Um, I haven't tried beta blockers because I'm asthmatic, so they won't give me beta blockers. I've tried CBD oil. That doesn't help, unfortunately. Um, and I've tried things for my posture. I've tried all sorts of things for my posture. So I have a little mirror here. This mirror is on my computer so that when I'm sitting, I'm making sure I'm looking in the mirror. Um, I've tried a posture t-shirt, posture a posture sort of brace thing that you pull, all sorts of things for my posture. So those are the things that I can remember that I have tried that have not had any long-term effects for me. Where I'm at currently with the, in the NHS system, if you like, is I haven't been to neurology for many, many years because the last um, diagnosis I had was that she said I have uh, migraines and cervicogenic headaches. But I need to really go back now because the headaches, like I said, have got worse in the last three years. But I can only go back to neurology if I have tried um, a certain amount of, of drugs. And the last one that I need to try is to pyramate. And I'm on it now for the second time. I did try it and the side effects are pretty horrendous. They are, they made me extremely emotional. Everything dries up. So your, all of your mucous membranes dry up. So your mouth is completely dry. Your nose is completely dry. I can't breathe properly at night. So I started wearing these nose strips. Um, and you, you know your mouth just feels horrible when you wake up it sounds really benign but it's when you put them all together it's very horrible um, the worst bit was the emotional side and the sleeping it makes you feel like you just need to sleep in the day but actually this time I'm going to start on the very very low dose and I'm not going to increase it until the side effects are bearable oh indigestion is another side effect um, and so I'm giving those another try once I have tried those if they work great, if they don't, I get um, a referral to neurology and I would hope to be able to get some type of injection in. There's a point just here in my neck that if I press it on, it shoots into my eye and that is the cervical, you can see my eyebrow kind of reacts to it. Um, if I could get an injection, a kind of nerve block in there, I feel like that would help. So I would hope that that's something in my future. So that's where I'm at. Let me tell you what I do, what my coping tools are. And these kind of apply to most of my headaches. So whether it's the, the um, migraines or whether it's the cervicogenic headaches. So don't feel like I am talking a lot about the neck, but if I, I'm not just talking about the neck related the cervicogenic headaches, I am also talking about the migraines um, and they will be things that you can try. So acupressure is something that I try and I can feel that there is tension in the acupressure points. The two that have worked for me are under my eyes here. And so if you press on points here, let me see if I could feel any tension. There's a complete difference between feeling, like I can feel when I press on them, but there's sometimes points like right there. When I press there, I can feel a pain and it's different than feeling pressure. You know, I can feel there that I'm pressing. It's like, oh, all right. But then there's points where you get to where you can actually feel like, ow, that's, you know, you're touching something that's shooting pain. When you feel that, if you just hold that bit gently and gently press on it, you're supposed to do it with two fingers, actually. Hold and release. That can sometimes help. And that's something that I sometimes sit and do when I've done a few other things on here and I'm kind of like, right, okay, what else can I do to try and you know get rid of this headache? That can help. So give that a go. And look up acupressure and acupressure points. I think I mentioned that I've had acupuncture and that didn't help, unfortunately, but acupressure seems to be a bit more useful for me. Um, I'm on a lot of drugs for my headaches. I'm on daily codeine. So I take codeine phosphate the full dose, the 60 milligrams, three or four times a day, depending on how my head's going. So mostly it's three times. I don't very often take the four, the four times a day um, because I do have a headache all day, every day, but it's it's how how bad it gets. Now that I'm on to pyramate, I'm actually forgetting to take the third dose, which is unheard of for me, which shows you that to pyramate does actually work for my headaches. But like I said, there's a lot of other horrible side effects to to pyramate. Um, and codeine works for me only to a point. It, it takes it to a bearable level most days. When it then is, is unbearable, oh, I take paracetamol as well with the codeine, but when my headache becomes unbearable, I also have diazepam. Um, diazepam I really only use for the migraines. I don't use those for the cervicogenic headaches unless they are unbearable. Um, 
because the cervicogenic headaches more make me sort of fuzzy headed rather than be in unbearable pain. But when I take the diazepam, it really just knocks me out to sleep so that I can get through and wake up and hopefully some of the pain's gone because the migraine pain that I got is unbearable. It's not pain, you know, my husband and I called them my suicide headaches because I would not want to, I'd rather die than go through that pain again. It's absolutely horrific. Um, so those are the drugs I'm on. I also take turmeric, coenzyme Q10, which has B2 in it as well, because those are things that are thought to be helpful. Um, I don't take ibuprofen because it's something that I'm allergic to. So if I feel a headache, a painful headache coming on, let's say, because every, like I said, every day I have a headache. At the moment, I would say my headache is a two or three out of 10. So it's not a very high level pain. If I raise my voice, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, there's a little bit of noise sensitivity there, but it's not a day where I would need to reach for all my emergency headache things. I've got it in my phone, my migraine emergency is called, and if I can feel this migraine or really painful headache coming on, these are the things I do. I would firstly go and have a large glass of water. That's something I would recommend any of you do, um, because if you have constipation, that can cause you a headache, and a large glass of water is something that it can it can help that on its way. But also a large glass of water can just hydrate you and that can be one of the reasons for any kind of headache. Um, and when you have migraines, the neurologist told me that you can start to think any headache is a migraine. You can get very, very confused because there's that. Your body has a memory of a migraine. It thinks any headache is a migraine. And so you could confuse being um, dehydrated with having a migraine. So have a large glass of water, if you can, because I know for myself, I feel sick when I have a migraine. So the only way I can do it is by putting ice in it. So I put loads and loads of ice into a glass of water and I drink that. I take the, any drugs that I need to take, any supplements that I need to take. Eat something if you can, because again, eating seems to help. I know fellow migraine sufferers that I've met and fellow headache sufferers seem to say the same thing, that eating something, especially something that's really like meaty or earthy, you know, like like a burger, a cheeseburger or a cheeseburger and chips, something like that seems to help. I don't know why, um, but it seems to help. So if you can do that, if you can stomach it, it depends on the stage you're at and if you feel sick or not. So again, I try to do that if I can. Um, the next thing that I do is I put peppermint oil all over my forehead. And you need to be very, very careful with this. I've always got peppermint essential oil in. Anything I talk about like this, I'll make sure I list in the description for you so that you can you know, buy these supplies and have them in. Um, but it's basically the same as, you know, you can buy these forehead patches and those forehead patches are good, but you may as well use peppermint oil because the peppermint oil is much stronger. And those forehead strips, I've got some of them, but they, Firstly, you know, they're quite obvious, but then when you, if you move, they sometimes come off. Um, and I just find, I just find the peppermint oil much better. The only thing is my husband doesn't like the smell of it, but you do need to be very careful. Do not go anywhere, anywhere below your eyebrow and don't go anywhere past the end of your eyebrows because it will sting your eyes a little bit. I don't find that to be a problem because at the point I'm putting peppermint oil on, I'm not going to be opening my eyes. I'm going to be going into a dark room and closing my eyes, you know. Um, so I put peppermint oil on, I've had my last glass of water, I've had my food, I've had my drugs. I will probably go and lie on a foam roller, you know, I've got a sort of knobbly foam roller, again I'll link it for you, that I roll on to kind of take out any knots in my neck and I'll then put a heat pad on, I've got a really nice wheat heat pad that, that is an actual neck one, so I'll put that on my neck in case there's any tension in my neck, put my peppermint oil on my head and actually the peppermint oil smell is really quite comforting um, but the fact that it numbs the whole of your head it it doesn't take the headache away but it just for a second is a is a lot of relief because it almost takes the outside of the pain away it's really hard to explain but it's worth you trying I should say there's a lot of things I do that are to prevent these things happening as well you know so that is like the mirror on my computer is so that my posture is good I don't drive long distances anymore you know, I don't drive anywhere that is over half an hour um, simply because I know that it will cause me neck pain, which will then cause me a headache. I don't, I've got a treadmill here, but it's being picked up today. I hired it and we've just said, you know what? I can't do it because it's causing me headaches. I don't do shopping. I've switched to online ordering. 
um, for the groceries because the bags are just too heavy. Um, and so I try to order anything that is heavy. KT tape is something else, you know, physio tape. So I'll list that for you in case you want to try that. And I'll also list a video that will show you how it needs to be applied. You'll need to get somebody else to apply it for you. Um, but there are some other things that are you, you perhaps wouldn't think of and that are maybe a bit unusual and then there's a couple of other things that are really unusual but like I said if you're in pain these are things that you'll be willing to try. Um, the first thing is mouth massage and it's the guy that I'm thinking of I hope I can find his, his video shows you exactly how to do this mouth massage yourself and it is specifically for migraines and it is just like putting your hands inside and there's different ways of doing it and actually when I press on my jaws here I can feel a lot of pain in here. So I might actually have, when I find his video, I might actually do it myself as more of a sort of prevention thing. I can feel there's so much tension there in my jaws. Um, but he does it showing you like do it inside your jaws and there's a specific way of doing it. It's a kind of press and move, press and move, as opposed to just a sort of massage and technique. He's very, very good. And that has helped on occasion. Um, binaural beats. I don't really understand what binaural beats are, but I know people that swear by them for pain relief. I know people that have even used them for animals. And so that's something else I've um, used before and I've just had binaural beats playing. And weirdly, I, it's not a noise that has bothered me too much when I've had that really bad migraine. I've been very, very noise sensitive. The binaural beats hasn't been a noise that has bothered me. So that's interesting. And I'll link you a binaural beats for migraines video. It's just, it's a very unusual sound. Like I said, it's not something I can really explain, but it's it's something worth giving a go if you've got a headache. Um, and then there's two kind of wacky things. Um, one is just my own, just something I find comforting. I like to wear a hat, um, a tight hat if possible. And so I have, I don't always remember to do it, but if I do, if I have got a headache, I put a hat on. There's something just comforting about something feeling something tight around your head. And actually I did date a guy that suffered with headaches before I'd ever experienced a headache. And he used to tie um, his tie around his head when he had a headache. So there's obviously something in it. You know, there's obviously a reason for it. I'm not just crazy. <laughs> um, so try it, you know, if you've got a headache, try it, why not? Um, and the final thing is probably the, the craziest of it all because the, the guy is a bit crazy, but it's a guy called Kamal and I found him when I was looking for headache solutions and he's got this video that is how to heal your migraine in a, in a minute or something like that. And it, it's basically him talking to you through the screen saying, where is your headache? What color is your headache? What shape is your headache? And he's asking you these questions and you follow these questions. And the idea is that by the end of it, your headache's gone. Now I didn't find that, but if you look in the comments, some people have found that their headache has gone. So I'll link his video because you never know. Like I said, when you've got such a bad headache, you will try anything. I would have been willing to try anything that didn't cause me any more pain. You know, that's the only thing with, I had to listen to his voice and that was a bit pain causing, but you, like I was just so desperate to get over the pain. So hopefully I have told you something that you didn't know, maybe there's a little nugget of information that you might not have been aware of and that you can use to help you. Um, I would love to hear your experiences because there may be things I haven't thought of. Um, you know, I'd love to hear what your experiences are with different drugs, with different natural remedies, with any kind of remedy, let me know. And it's useful to everybody else as well um, with their experiences. Um, yeah, that's everything. Like I said, I will link all, all the things I've talked about in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.